G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday evening here in Australia, markets down again. Now under $1.9 trillion, so the dead cat bounce is certainly in play at the moment. And things are not looking great, but it doesn't mean the dead cat bounce has to play out. It's just looking like a, uh, a dead cat bounce at the moment. It's not a confirmed dead cat bounce yet. We could easily turn this around, but we'll have to wait and see. Bitcoin dominance rising, everyone's getting a bit scared in the market, getting out of altcoins, they're starting to drop. Bitcoin is usually the safest place, so people are less likely to sell Bitcoin, a whole lot more likely to sell their altcoins, which is definitely what's happening right now. Volume dropped a whole lot, obviously, people are really scared at the moment. Uh, Bitcoin price, uh, it's gotten down to around 41, I think it even got down into the 40s currently holding at 42 and a half and gas price is a little bit high i'd say that's a lot of people again getting into stable coins and things like that uh, i don't know if there's a whole lot of people buying altcoins at the moment but look there's always exceptions to the rule but we can have a look it just again looks like a bloodbath well there you go uni swaps up chain link is up a little bit but generally it doesn't look real good all right let's have a look has anything done well we know there's at least uniswap what's performed the best in the top 100 there won't be much considering we're down all right dydx had an amazing move perp is up uniswap and then we got a couple of nice single digit oh I call them nice low single digit moves any gain is good and again there's only about sort of 12 coins there that are really making gains and look a couple of them are pretty small gains at that and then we're obviously going into the losses but hey DYDX, people would have to be pretty happy with that, and PERP, and look, even Uniswap. I'm not sure what that says about any of these coins, because if they're pumping today and the market's still going down tomorrow, these will most likely dump tomorrow. And again, it's just people uh, trying to pump up the price a little bit to then dump on everybody. There really does look to be a lot of fear in the market at the moment. All right, what about losses then? We know it's not going to be pretty. What's done the worst in the top 100? There we go, Huobi nearly 20%. Cello, again, that was pumping and now it's on its way down 13%. Filecoin, 13%. Phantom, near Adam, again, that's been pumping for a while and that now that's coming down. Terra Luna, Harmony, I mean, you name it. Look, it's just losses across the board. So things are not looking great at the moment. But some things we need to keep in mind is the greatest financial gains come from when the market is the most scared. Now, excuse me, that doesn't mean we're at the bottom yet. I don't know when the bottom is. I still don't know if we're truly in a bear market yet. We're in a bearish pattern, but we still could be in a bull market. So, And look, the fact is no one truly knows what's going on. That's the honest truth. You're not going to find one YouTuber who really knows what's going on. You're not going to find one Twitter person who knows what's really what's really going on. Not one hedge fund manager who really knows what's going on. There is no one person who knows exactly what's happening. Uh, it is a, you know, you could say it's like a bit of a lottery, but look, there's people who would have a good educated guess uh, and some really smart people out there, but that's as good as it gets. It is just an educated guess. It's not going to be anything more. No one truly knows exactly what's going to happen. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. As I said, this is still looking. Now we've set in another lower high. Now this was lower before. This actually had a candle body that was down below here. Now the candle body has gone back up to this old resistance point. It is just acting as support, but we've got wicks going down. So again, for me, it's really we get to this 38,000. And again, not a wick. We can have some big crazy wick that almost comes down to here. If the candle bodies are staying above 38,000, then I'm not too worried. Again, this is all just market sort of uh, fluctuations, maybe manipulation, who knows? It's hard to you know, point it down to exactly that. But this at the moment is setting lower lows. Now this could be the bottom though. Maybe again, people said they believe we had to come back down to 42,000 before we could then go up again. This was too much too soon. Well, hey, we're down at 42,000. So maybe come tomorrow, Monday morning when the market's open, that could be it and we start to go up but what is definitely possible is we get a whole lot of sideways movement for a long time this could be you know again a big shakeout the big players doing everything they can to suppress the price to get as many people as they can to sell out while they buy it all up on the cheap and then let it run 
Again, I'm not saying that is what's happening. I'm never offering you financial advice, but it is a possibility. There's all sorts of possibilities and you need to have all of them in your mind. And again, for me, what am I doing if we go up? Well, I'm celebrating if we go up, that's gonna be great. What are we doing if I'm going down? Depending on what coin we're talking about, I'm going to start selling some. If Bitcoin gets down below 38,000, I'm not selling my Bitcoin, I'm not selling my Ethereum. I may sell a little bit of Cardano, uh, and then I'll probably sell a good chunk of all my other altcoins, really. Not Matic. Won't be selling Matic, won't be selling ADA, won't be selling XRP, won't be selling Ethereum, won't be selling uh, Bitcoin. All the other coins that I have, yeah, I'll probably start to scale out of them. But I don't have that much money put in them, uh, in all honesty. Uh, and some of them are kind of break even, and if they're not at break even, Again, I don't have that much in them. I'll probably just let them ride and I'll wait to see what happens. If, if that's going to take four years, then so be it. That is a possibility that, again, yes, 64K was the top uh, and that was it. But it's not guaranteed. This hasn't played out yet. Really, we need to break below 38 before I get worried. And definitely, we start to get down below the $30,000 mark. Yep. Really, it is around about here. 38,000, we go below that. Again, proper closes and not just little closes just under it. I mean, proper closes where we're going down. Again, getting into the 30s, definite bear market. Uh, you know, we would have already been in a bear market from back here. For me, I'm not panic selling. Like I said, there's coins that I just simply refuse to sell. I believe they have long term potential. I'll hold on to those. And, you know, if I can get a little bit of profit out of some of the ones that I got really good. Uh, profits from then I might but Bitcoin won't be one of them and Ethereum won't be one of them And I'm not saying I didn't get good profits from those. I just simply refuse to sell those period Might sell a little bit of Cardano and might sell a little bit of Manic uh, And really that might be it but definitely all the other altcoins that I have and I've got a fair few uh, I will be sort of cutting some losses with them, but I won't be just completely selling out uh, and definitely any that are in profits, I'll probably at the very least take them profits, try to get my money back that I put in. That may work with some, maybe not work with others. And then I will be still continuing to DCA though, into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, not so much the other coins, I've already got pretty good positions in them. And I will just constantly DCA in every week, every fortnight, you know, whenever it is I get the money and it comes in. But I'll be putting a good portion towards stable coins while the market's going down and I'll wait for a bottoming out formation before I then start to deploy a lot more into the actual cryptocurrencies. I've showed a number of videos of my sort of strategies. You know, if I believe we are in a bear market, I still don't believe we are yet, but it may play out. I'll be putting a lot of money into stable coins, but still be DCAing into Bitcoin, particularly Bitcoin. I don't mind buying it on the way down. People say, you know, catching a falling knife and all that. Okay, that's great. I don't know where the exact top is. I didn't know it was going to be 64. I don't know where the exact bottom is. I play that Rothko, uh, like I play it like uh, Baron Rothschild did. He never sold the top. He always sold too early and he never bought the exact bottom. But he made a lot of money in between and that's exactly what I plan to do. Why would I try and outplay one of the greatest investors? And even Warren Buffett, he never sells the exact top and he doesn't buy the exact bottom. He's making all his money in between. I know that if I'm just thereabouts in between, I'm going to make plenty of money. All right, moving on, some really interesting stories. Andre Cronje launches rival to marketplace OpenSea. And he says it's not about the money, it's about sending a message. And that message was because the NFT marketplace, uh, OpenSea obviously had that insider trading sort of stuff going on. And that that affected me. And I'm not even in the NFT market. I just didn't like that. I was like, oh, that's so dodgy. We need to get rid of stuff. So what he's done, he's making an NFT marketplace called, uh, hopefully I'll say this, Arteon. And he's just launched it in beta on the Phantom blockchain. So that's interesting. He hasn't gone with Ethereum. He's gone on an all new blockchain. But Phantom is uh, Ethereum EVM compatible. But maybe this will be something to rival OpenSea. And it's unfortunate for OpenSea that they had that executive doing that because it really has tarnished their name. Whether it then ruins their name you know, completely or not, we'll have to wait and see. But it is unfortunate that that happened. <sighs> competition is always a good thing. As long as it's got good competition, we don't want to have another basically open sea market out there that does exactly the same we want something decentralized in all fairness but 
There we go. Could be some competition coming from a guy who's pretty smart. All right, Robert Kiyosaki. So he was a big gold and silver guy. He's got into Bitcoin. Well, guess what? He's now also into Ethereum. So Rich Dad Poor Dad's author now invests in Ethereum after Bitcoin and gold. So, uh, and silver because he invests in silver as well. But he's come out and said uh, he is telling his followers to seize a number of assets while they can, including Ethereum. He believes there is a big dump coming and while he knows that cryptocurrencies will get really hard, even he knows he can't pick the exact bottom. But he definitely can't pick the exact top either. So he's just trying to buy the good cryptocurrencies at cheap prices. He obviously thinks Ethereum's cheap right now, but he's also smart. He's layering in on the way down because he won't be able to pick the exact bottom. But he obviously thinks that uh, Ethereum at the moment at about 2800 is a good buy and he'll just keep buying it all the way down. Again, not chucking everything in tomorrow thinking this is the bottom. He'll just keep layering in and he's already come out and said that he's got plenty of cash sitting on the side for if there is a really big crash and things really do go down a lot further. But that's the thing. He's not afraid to, afraid to invest at these prices. Neither of the big uh, crypto companies, they're still buying. And again, the big, not, not big cryptocurrencies, big institutions, sorry. They got no idea what the bottom is. They don't know. That is the honest truth. But what they do know is once these things start to go up, and eventually they will, they're going to rock it up. Look, it could take three years. It could take four years. We could go through a recession. And maybe it takes 10 years. But crypto is not dead. The same problems will lie with fiat money no matter what happens. Eventually, they will start printing more and your dollar, excuse me, will be worth less. Now, again, we could go through some uh, deflation where the dollar value goes up. And again, that could last a couple of years, but eventually it stops. And that's when cryptocurrencies start to pick up all their value again. And they will get back to old all-time highs if they're good projects that were built to last. They weren't just kind of flash in the pan stuff. So I like, I really like uh, Richard Kiyosaki. I think he's a very smart man. He's getting old and on a bit, but what I like about him is he was able to see past gold. Peter Schiff couldn't, and a number of other people couldn't. He saw the benefits in BTC, and he was like, "Yep, this thing's probably good." And he's trying to set up his kids, uh, you know, generational wealth and things like that. And now he's going after Ethereum. I can tell you right now, I'm buying Ethereum on the way down as well. More focusing on Bitcoin because it won't get hammered as much. But again, wherever, whenever we get to some kind of bottoming formation and it looks like things are starting to go back up again, that's when I'll start to buy all the altcoins and things like that. But really, I'm only going to focus on Bitcoin, uh, a little bit of Ethereum and stable coins until I see a pattern change. And we still could. We may not be in a bear market. Uh, we may just be in that bearish pattern that I spoke about. But I need to see these key levels pass. we got to get higher than 45. That still doesn't mean I'm piling into altcoins. we got to get higher than 48. Again, still not piling into uh, altcoins. Once I see Bitcoin get above 52,000 and a half, let's say, that's when I'll start to go after altcoins again. But for now, they're just costing too much. Yeah, they have these good pumps, but I can guarantee you, you've lost almost all of this just about here. It wouldn't be too far off. Not Well, not quite all of it, but you would have lost a lot of it. And again, if this starts to go lower, then you're quickly going to lose a whole lot, whereas Bitcoin is holding its value better than others, as it does when it goes down. But, still to, but it is still susceptible to very big dumps. All right, Cardano. They had the big uh, sort of conference that's going on for Cardano and they are partnering with American telecom service, Dish Network. This is going to be all over the place, uh, all over Twitter, all over YouTube. So the strategic partnership aims to introduce Cardano's blockchain technology to Dish's telecom services. It's likely going to boost Cardano's adoption, but it's also going to benefit Dish's users with 8 million digital identities or DIDs on phones and satellites. So here is why I'm not selling my Cardano. Will I sell some maybe and get my initial uh, money back? Yeah, if Bitcoin continues to go down because I'm still well and truly up on that. But I won't be selling any major chunks. Likewise with Matic Network, i.e. Polygon, I believe that has real long-term value. Will I take some money and try and get back my, well not try, I'm still well up, and get back my initial uh 
money absolutely but then i'll just let the less the rest ride and again i will start to put money back into that once i see things start to change but i was lucky enough to get myself a pretty good position in both cardano and uh polygon when they were super cheap literally cents cardano i think I, the cheapest i got it was like maybe three cents eight cents and polygon i got it between two cents and three cents i still bought more after those prices in both of them but i got big chunks down there i mean it didn't cost me much uh, at all at that time so i'll be holding those right we obviously know that twitter has announced that you can now do bitcoin tipping on it well kathy woods arc invest has come out and she's bought 89 million dollars worth of twitter shares after the bitcoin tips integration now again we're going to see how these investors go down in history. People like Michael Saylor, Kathy Woods and all the rest of it. I mean, they have poured millions of dollars, not into just specifically crypto, but definitely crypto, but also stocks in companies around crypto. And again, the markets are sort of going down, haven't been traveling too well, but she's still throwing $89 million worth of uh, money, not, yeah, $89 million uh, at Twitter shares. Uh, and they are heavy crypto. I don't know what else to tell you. Follow what might be the smart money. Again, that's never financial advice, so I'm not telling you anything. But I know what I'm doing. I'm not buying Twitter shares, don't get me wrong. I'm not really into stocks that much. But I am going to focus on crypto, but I'm just not going to throw the kitchen sink out at the moment. I need to see a true bottoming formation and a change, i.e. again, breaking really 52,000 before I start to, again, really deploy you know, heavy amounts, what I would consider heavy amounts of money anyway, at cryptocurrencies. All right. The average Aussie crypto investors portfolio grew 258% in the 2021 uh, financial year surveys revealed. Now, older Australian crypto investors outweigh the new generation in initial investment, but the younger crowd is more active in daily trading. Uh, I don't like to daily trade. Again, every time you do a trade, you're probably going to lose you know, up to nearly 50% of any profits you made. I find it a whole lot easier to invest. But 258% in a year, that's pretty good. And that is just the average. So that means there was a whole lot of people that made a whole lot more. And there was definitely some people that made a whole lot less as well. 258%, very nice. Congratulations to all my Aussie crypto investors. But this is obviously going to start to go down if this market continues to go down so you know are they taking profits or are they here for the long haul and happy to just uh, continue to dca right through the bear winter and again you can you can dca through a bear market smartly you're just putting a little bit into crypto but again having a lot of cash sitting on the side for when things finally do change last but not least indonesia will not ban cryptocurrencies like china minister says as crypto trade soars so the country will limit itself to ensuring they are not used in illegal activities. That's the kind of regulation you want. You don't want to be banning cryptocurrencies and you know regulating them so hard that you know you crush this new technology. You want to build new laws around this and get rid of the bad stuff and the illegal stuff absolutely, but foster the really good innovation. So, you know, particularly in America, they need to stop trying to make cryptocurrencies fit their old laws. They need to write new laws that fit cryptocurrency. It says here, the statement comes after local exchanges registered a serious increase in turnover this year over in Indonesia. So the people have voted because they're putting so much into crypto. And that is starting to happen over in the States as well. And you know anyone who's over in America, write to your politicians, your ministers and things like that. Let them know you don't want this uh, space banned and regulated and, you know, trying to fit into the old rules that we need new rules made specifically for crypto that benefit everybody we need to move away from that old system you know the system we're on now that only you know keeps the rich rich and keeps unfortunately everyone else exactly where they are makes it nearly impossible to get out we need an open free market where everyone has the same investing opportunities as everybody and we all have the same safety nets not safety nets that are more stricter on people who have less money with that you know provisor oh but it's protecting them no it's not protecting them it's holding them back all right i'm not going to get on too much of a rant that already is a little bit one a little bit of one right there stay safe be kind to one another 
pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. Not guaranteed we're in a dead cat bounce just yet, but it is looking more and more likely. And I'll see you next time.